Good morning, Greyhounds, and welcome to this edition of your CHTV Morning Announcements. Today, we'll start things off at the sports desk with Ryan Foster, who will give us an inside look at the Carmel senior football player, Matthew Wolf. Following with an update on the construction projects going around in Carmel. Finally, we will discuss the passing of Tom Petty and the choir concert with Daniel Rothschild in Entertainment. To end the show, we will turn this over to our in-studio and video announcements. Stay tuned, Greyhounds. Good morning, Greyhounds. I'm Neil Walker Simmons. And I'm Allie Carmichael, bringing you CHTV's morning announcements. Well, good luck to our football team tomorrow as they take on Warren Central. I hope everyone comes out to support the team on senior night. Don't forget to wear your red, white, and blue. Yeah, and also congrats to the girls' soccer team on the sectional win, and good luck tonight as they take on Burbuff. All right, please stand for a moment of si Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. A happy birthday goes out to Officer Gene Stiltz, Engineering and Technology teacher Sid Swartzendruber, Sam Billingsley, Sockett Chilla, Taylor Fleming, Ryan Forrest, Justin Galloway, Garrett Catherine, Austin Koss, Emma Nitzis, Celine O, oh, Caitlin Palmer, Zachary Scarberry, Kathleen Schleckel, Adam Spensley, Alana Tragesser, and Alexander Wekalakwik. Happy birthday, guys. The Carmel football team takes on Warren tomorrow for the senior night. I'm here with Ryan Foster, who will give us a deeper look on this and explain how special this is to our seniors. Exactly, Neil Walker. This game means so much to many seniors as they get to play at home during the regular season one more time. For Matthew Wolf, this means so much more. After going out with a season-ending injury last year, Wolf is trying to make this one count. Griffin Gonzalez and Timmy Dixon interviewed senior Matthew Wolf about his recovery and what this season means to him. It was going to be my first start for varsity against Pike in week four. So I was playing safety against Pike in week four, and I was approaching the ball carrier on the sideline, and I was just a few feet away from the running back, and then bang, a receiver, his helmet came up under my shoulder pads, I was on the ground instantly. They were just trying to keep me calm, asking if I needed help off the field. Uh, to this day, I don't know how I got off the field. So, as a junior, the first few games of the season, um, I was not starting in our base coverages or defenses, but I was coming in on the past defenses. They like the lankier safeties on that to get some deep coverage there over the top. And I was starting to go in a lot more in there. They liked our pass defense, how we were playing. And actually week four, I did get the start. Week four, and I was approaching the ball carrier on the sideline. And I was just a few feet away from the running back. And then bang, a receiver. His helmet came up under my shoulder pads. I was on the ground instantly. I tried to get up, and I just couldn't. My first reaction was I thought he probably had a concussion because it looked like he got hit pretty hard. But you know, he's hit somebody that hard and been hit that hard before. But I thought when he was down, it was probably a concussion or something like that. I had no idea it was the kind of injury that he actually had. So it hurt the most right under my ribs on the left side when my spleen and I split in half. That's the worst thing that happened. But your organs they have a like channel reaction that you get pain in your shoulder. So my left shoulder was feeling horrible, and then some of the ribs I messed up and broke were up higher on the left side. So it was mostly shoulder and then under my rib cage. The, um, from the game to the hospital, it always it just kind of went fast. Um, all the EMTs, the doctors on the sideline, the trainers were very helpful. They just tried to keep me calm. They tried to get me on the stretcher without causing any more pain. And when I got in the ambulance, they were just hooking me up to all kinds of stuff so they could check what was going on. 
Um, what kind of crushed me is the first um, nurse that came in and saw me in the hospital in 86th Street. Um, after he saw some of my results, the first thing that came out of his mouth is, you're done playing football for this season. Um, we'll see after that. And that just crushed me. I mean, I knew it was a severe injury, but I always had hope that I could come back and play maybe at the end of the season. The team was there for me at all stages, even after the game, late at night. After the game was over against Pike, all, all kinds of players rushed to the hospital and saw me, even some of the coaches. And at that point, I was pretty much couldn't move. I was in a neck brace because they had to do some uh, CT scans of my upper body to make sure everything was all right there. Um, I was just laying in bed. I could hardly move, but they'd come up so I could see them. And I cried when I saw almost all of them. Um, my football teams, my brothers, they were there through every step. Um, a few days later after the game was my birthday and I was still in the hospital and I'd say almost 40 guys came and bought me food and gift cards and just spent that night with me and a cake and that was awesome. I don't know much less I just learned this, but I met it's just you have to make do with what is put in front of you. You either make it a positive and try to, you know, sometimes your path isn't going the way you want. You have to make some adjustments and um, just try to stay positive. And, and Matthew's having fun. He got voted in as a captain, um, so that meant a lot to him and us. And, Experience, you know, from the loss of his brother to, you know, losing most of the season last year to this injury, and um, you know, you just gotta, you gotta find a way to fight through it. You gotta live your life. You gotta move on. And he's done a great job doing that. So we're proud. Um, I just want to make my school proud this year. Hopefully, we get a win for the whole community that's there. I mean, injuries are hard to come back from, but football is a big part of my life. I wouldn't want to be shy or anything. I just want to go out there and play for my school. It's amazing to hear how impactful the stories here at CHS are. Definitely. We now send it over to Allie with some more announcements. The following is scheduled for today, October 5th. Kenya Club will meet after school in H213. French Club will have an important meeting after school in A223. Kids Voice Club will meet after school in H209 until 350. Friendship Bracelet Club will meet after school in H105. Carmel Amnesty will meet after school in H322. Speech Team will have a call out meeting in E149 after school. Gaming Club is canceled for today. Here in Carmel, there are always current construction projects ongoing. Jack Edwards and Quinlan Perriant from CHTV took a deeper look into how the construction affects community members. Growing cities in Indiana, leading the state in population growth. From 2000 to 2010, Carmel's population grew 109%, jumping to over 79,000. And as the population grew, the development of the city soon followed. Millions of dollars have been poured into the development of infrastructure of Carmel. However, this has caused an awkward transition period as Carmel residents have to balance the issues the construction causes. Uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, it can be frustrating, but uh, it's all actually it's really great because they're putting in amazing businesses that everybody knows about, so. Friedman isn't the only business owner who believes in the benefit of the construction. Um, well, I mean, any kind of increased foot traffic would help. Um, I mean, they already do so much, uh, like fairs, races, activities. However, the funding on construction has been judged by some to be a little excessive, as other areas could be addressed. I know that the Carmel Police Department uh, is understaffed. Um, I know that uh, several years ago when we acquired the West Side Village of West Clay, they were promised uh, at least 10 new officers. Uh, that did not happen. The Carmel Fire Department is a ladder short, um, so they need a ladder truck, and it takes at least six guys to maintain that ladder, I'm sorry, minimum four guys to maintain the ladder, six to fully staff it. Town Mayor Jim Brainerd has stressed the development of roundabouts, as shown by the fact Carmel have more roundabouts than any other city in the U.S. And Carmel residents do believe this is a good thing for the city. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that the short-term construction 
um, inconveniences. Having been here now for 13 years, and having seen some of the updates that have gone on in the city, specifically surrounding roundabouts in our area and so forth, um, the short term is absolutely worth the inconvenience because I do think the property values will increase. We have seen a reduction in the number of fender benders. They eliminate a lot of things. They eliminate the stop and go traffic. They eliminate the need for electricity at those intersections. You know, if you go into the city of Indianapolis, just south of 96th Street, you immediately see the difference in the roads. Uh, and I drive about 300 miles a day, so I'm all over the state uh, with, with what I do for a living. So uh, it's, it's actually a joy when I come back to Carmel, or even in Westfield, some of the Westfield area is, is expanding and they're getting roundabouts as well. Uh, it, it just makes travel that much more smooth. Carmel has rapidly developed into one of the best cities in the United States, recently being ranked the best place to live. Development in Carmel will be continuing, with a plan to construct 32 roundabouts approved last year. For CHTV, this has been Jack Edwards and Quinlan Perry. The following is scheduled for tomorrow, October 6th. Fellowship of Christian Athletes will meet at 7 before school in the freshman cafeteria. Lifelines will be having a work session after school on Monday in room A201. So if you missed the call-up meeting, come check things out on Monday. Earlier this week, Tom Petty passed away. He was known for his popular songs like Free Falling and American Girl. To give us a deeper look on, this, on his legacies, uh, we hand things over to Danielle Rothschild. Good morning, Greyhounds. I'm Danielle Rothschild, bringing you your CHTV Entertainment Update. Many Americans are sad to hear about rock legend Tom Petty passing away at age 66. Petty passed away from cardiac arrest on Monday. Petty's released three solo albums and 13 albums with his band, The Heartbreakers. He was beloved by his fans, and in return, he showed his gratitude by his actions, including not allowing his record company to raise the price of his record. Petty has won 18 Grammys and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2002. Last night, Carmel High School's choir had their first concert. It was the first concert for many freshmen and the first experience for two new choir teachers, Mr. Barker and Mr. Chenoweth. Each choir performed their set. New addition choir member Sam Helt says, the concert went well, everyone did their best, and it was fantastic. At the end of the concert, all choirs came together and sang Power of the Dream. The next choir concert is in December for Holiday Spectacular. That's all I have, Greyhounds. This has been Danielle Rothschild with your entertainment report. Now back to you, Neil Walker and Allie. College representatives for today. At 9.30, Kalamazoo College, Aurora University. At 10 o'clock, Manchester University. At 10.30, Northwestern University, Huntington University. CHS Seniors, the CHS Counseling Office will offer several college essay and application help sessions over the next few weeks during Late Start and SRT. At these help sessions, CHS Counselors and College and Career Resource Center staff are ready to answer your questions. They are more than happy to read your essay drafts and provide feedback on the spot. Seniors wishing to attend an SRT help session must attain a pass from the Counseling Office. Late Start, pass, late start sessions do not require a pass. We now send it over to some in-studio and video announcements. Hey guys, we're here from Do Something Club and this Friday on October 6th um, at the football game we're um, raising money for the Breast Cancer Foundation. 100% uh, of that will go to them. Uh, and this is so important because one in eight women in their lifetime will get breast cancer uh, and 40,000 of them will die from it and 400 men will die from it. So if you guys can come out and help support, that'd be great. And then if you can't come out and support, um, we have a link uh, so that you can donate online. Hey guys, NHS tutoring is today during SRT in Ms. Johnson's room E117. This is a great opportunity to get some help in any subject that you might be struggling with, from English, science, to math and history. We have tutors for all of these subjects and we have sessions every SRT and late start. If you need a pass, please see Ms. Johnson in room E117. Hey everyone, Coquette's tryouts are next Monday and Tuesday in the auxiliary gym from 3.30 to 5. Tryouts are welcome to girls in any grade who are interested. Hope to see you guys there. Hey Carmel, Mock Trial is having a call out next Tuesday, October 10th after school. 
Uh, if you're interested in an academic competition where you can reenact a fictional court case and play the role of a witness or a lawyer, you should come out to the call out in F102 next Tuesday, October, October 10th. Thank you, Carmel. Hey Carmel, registration for Ghosts and Goblins 5K is now open. You can go online to Carmel Education Foundation's website to sign up. Make sure you do so before the price goes up. This is a great way to spend some time with your friends and family. Bye. Hey guys, Carmel Volleyball here with some announcements. So tonight we have our last home game today, and it's also senior night. So if you haven't came out to any games, which I know you haven't, come tonight at 6.30 at the Varsity Gym. And next week at Noblesville at 7.30, we have our sectional, so come support your hounds. Yes. Carmel High School, once again, you guys have blown me away. Thank you so much for coming to the Chipotle Food Fundraiser last night. It was a huge turnout. There was huge lines. Everyone was coming getting burritos, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, and the kids at Riley Children's Hospital can't thank you enough. So thank you for helping the kids at Riley and Carmel Dance Marathon. Well, that's all we have for you, Greyhounds. Have a great weekend. Also, if you're interested in getting a full grasp on all the things going on at CHS, check out our YouTube channel, CHTV Carmel Television, or follow us on Instagram at Carmel TV. For CHTV, this has been Allie Carmichael and Neil Walker-Simmons signing out. Have a great rest of your day, Greyhounds.